Welcome to my TechFund, another laser engraver testing video. And I know I mentioned that I'm reducing the laser videos on this channel, but this one is a little bit different. This is Longer Nano Pro, and this box is sent to me by the Longer company in exchange for the review. This is portable laser engraver with the optical power of 12 watts, and the workspace is 100 by 300 millimeters, where properly it can reach this area with the extension rods. The engraving speed is 5000 mm per second. This is very big speed. It is able to move on this speed because it used the Galva system, but properly for the engraving we have to reduce this speed, otherwise we couldn't see anything on it. Cuts wood up to 10 mm thick, and it is compatible with the Lightburn and Laser GRBL. And uh, it arrives with a rotary unit, you know, for engraving of the cylindrical parts, and the lifespan of the laser is 10,000 hours. I calculate it with the four hour daily usage. It means seven years. Usually I always mention a few words about the safety. Don't forget that these are tools and not toys, which requires some safety equipment. The most important is the eye protection. I'm not sure if it arrives with some safety glasses or we have to use that shield. Uh, also use it in a good ventilated room and never leave the engraving without the supervision. And now let's see what's in the box. We have a box in the box. Box is empty. Wow, content of this package was really rich. So this is the main unit with the holder and the shield. And then we have this rotary unit, you know, for the cylindrical parts with the jaws. And then this is the slider to extend that workspace. And then we have the user manual, maybe some sample materials, uh, clips, data cable. These are the goggles, toolbox, and this is the power cable. The power adapter has the output of 12 volts and 5 amperes. This toolbox is really nicely organized. Let's assemble the unit. The assembling requires maybe 15 minutes. You can follow the user manual or there is very nice animation on the longest official YouTube channel. Later. It is nice to see that these cables are colored and we know exactly where we have to plug them because these are all USB Type-C plugs. And now I can lift it higher. Okay. The green is for the fan. I will start using it in this form and later I will try the rotary unit and the slider. Let's start with the testing. The engraver is connected with my laptop over this USB cable and I will start using it with the laser GAB first. And uh, first I have to set the focus. For this I have to press this button and then I can move the head up and down until I have only one spot there. I also noticed that using this uh, shield is a little bit annoying. I don't have space below it and I believe that it is useful only if you are doing the handhold engraving. So I'm removing it now, but in that case I don't have this fan. Another focus setting method is to use this ruler, 151 millimeters long, and it looks like that two spot method is accurate also, because it's on the spot. Currently I'm using the laser GBLS 7.12 and I already installed here these custom buttons and I have to choose the command baud port and uh, when I connect uh, I should see here the arrows, it's connected. And then I can import some picture. My tech fan logo is the typical one, vectorize, ok next. Speed 2000 mm per minute, constant power, very important. And after this, order of this button is extremely important. First clicking the frame to check the position, and only after this the nano button, and then play. And this is the boundary, so here will be the position of my engraving. And be careful because uh, these spots are not visible through this shield. I was confused a little bit, and only when I removed that shield, I could notice these spots. This is recorded in real time speed. A lot of smoke, that's why I have opened both windows here. Very nice final engraving with correct settings and until I was clicking in the wrong order those buttons, here you can see my failed attempts. The next one will be the same file, but this time I will fill it with the lines. Line to line tracing, here you can see my settings. I will try 10,000 mm per minute speed, constant power, this is the size. 
The size is the same and very important again, order of the buttons frame and after that the nano and play. Last few seconds of this engraving in the real time speed and very nice and deep engraving, maybe even too deep, maybe I should slow down, but until I was clicking in the wrong order those buttons, here you can see the previous attempts. In Liburn I am adding this device, import, and then I have to search for the file which is on the provided SD card, import, and then the software is ready for this device, we can even see it in the list. I am importing the SVG file, which are the outlines of my TechFan logo, changing its position, and then uh, here you can see the parameters, 2000 will be the speed, and the very important constant power mode is on. And extremely important is in console I have to click to this switch carving mode, and then I can do the framing and I can start the engraving. Framing is ok, start. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And finally we have the perfect engraving, very continuous line without any vibration because this is completely different technology like those regular laser engravers. And it looks like just I have to learn how to use it. And these breaks in the lines was because that constant power mode was disabled on these attempts. And one more time the MyTech Fun logo, but this time it will be filled with the lines. Here you can see my settings and very important, the constant power mode is enabled. These are the last few seconds of this engraving in the real time speed. It's finished correctly. Engraving a grayscale image and this time I'm disabling this constant power mode on. This is my second attempt and you will see the results soon. Again last few seconds of this engraving in real time speed and I'm using a small fan to protect a little bit the lens of the engraver and of the camera. And this time the engraving looks nice, those lines are error in the plywood, and here you can see my previous attempt, and uh, here the only difference was the constant power mode was on. And uh, I'm not sure why I have those black uh, areas, and the only difference is this, I was just following the instructions. And now cutting speeds from 200 to 1200. Now for the cutting disadvantage of this system is that you don't have the air assist. And this means we cannot go with very low speeds for the cutting, we have this limitation, otherwise it may catch some flame. For cutting I always like to use the honeycomb grid, this is my own. Even if I don't have the air assist, but it will help with the smoke because it will not stuck in those gaps. I set the new focus for this position. This small fan will help with the smoke. These few seconds are in real time speed. And now speed it up 10 times. And again last few seconds in real time speed. And two parts fall out. This is not bad, 400 mm per minute speed, this plywood is cut and out, and the edges are quite sharp and nice, and uh, usually I never go below 200 if I don't have the air assist, but this means that we can cut even two times thicker plywood in one pass. And now I want to test if we have the advantage of that higher traveling speed. I have this bench which has a lot of empty space and theoretically during the empty space the traveling should be much faster. Let's try to see what will we get. The framing is correct. This is real time footage and I can see that it jumps from one line to the other very quickly. And engraving is finished in less than two minutes. Mm, the engraving is really nice, almost like CD printed object. <laughs> of course if I switch to line engraving, in that case it will be even faster. And this is real time speed. <laughs> Finished. Maybe this one looks even nicer, <laughs> decide yourself. 3mm plywood you can cut without any problems, but let's see if we can cut 5mm plywood and uh, I will not go below 100mm per minute speed. The first cutting on 100 mm per minute, <laughs> no flame so far. 200 mm per minute, 300 mm per minute. Hmm, almost. So in one pass I could cut out on 100 mm per minute speed, but I can see a lot of smoke on the edges. On 200 mm per minute it was almost cutting out completely, just small part is missing here. But as I mentioned that this is not so good for the cutting because we don't have that air assist. Only up to maybe 3 mm thick plywood which you can cut on higher speeds. Now I want to test the rotary unit and uh, here we have several types of the jaws, but I will use these hexagonal bars. 
it would be good to have some kind of open range for this. We can even support it on the other side if necessary. Now in this case the height of the laser is not enough, so I will use this extender. Setting the new focus. Ok, this was a little bit confusing. So this focusing laser and the preview laser is not exactly in the same line. I have to move it now. And now I can see the engraving position. Or maybe it is simpler now to use the ruler. In the library I have to do some changes in device settings. I am changing the length of the height. And then very important is to click to switch to the rotary unit. Right click and then I can enter the diameter. I need it some time until I figure out that it has to be right click. And then I can start the framing and the engraving. Framing position is ok. And now I'm engraving only the outlines and according to my calculation it should fill half of this cylinder. Not bad, the engraving is really sharp and maybe even too strong for this material, but here I can see again small slip, so let's try one more time with smaller image. This time it was finished correctly and I think here I had some slip in the rotary unit because it wasn't tight. But here I'm not sure what happened because this is not a slip along the y-axis. In the meantime watching the preview I find the problem. Here you can see that uh, this is the working area of the engraver. And uh, these are some kind of overscans and it is outside of this boundary area. So this means that this part is moved a, a little bit to the right. And the y it is actually in the working area so it is not moved and that's why we have this shift. Ok, solution is very simple for this, but I should get some kind of warning for this. And the solution is actually to turn off the overscan, because we don't need it here. With this kind of engraver, and now if we watch the preview, then everything is in this working area. Actually I can hold it from the inside. I'm repeating this engraving with corrected settings, and this is the real time speed, and it will be finished in only a few seconds. And this time it is engraved correctly, and this was the previous attempt. By default the engraving area is not big, 100 by 100 millimeters, but with this slider we can extend it to 100 by 300 millimeters. Actually it has to be in this position, and before you start with the engraving don't forget to push this slider completely back, because it don't do the homing automatically, and if it is somewhere in the middle, and you start to engrave something longer, it will hit the end and then you will hear some grinding or something like that. In Liburn I have to do some changes in device settings. The length of y-axis is now 300 mm. And I'm using the tool here to enter some text which will be exactly 150 mm long. These are my settings for the engraving. I have to click to macro switch to slide extension and only then I can start the framing. The text will be 150 mm long and uh, here you can see the framing process. It is quite slow, I will speed it up a little bit. This part is speeded up and this noise really reminds me to the old and the 3 printers when they didn't use those silent stepper motor drivers. Pity. It's finished. The engraving is really nice without any problems and I have this rectangle with a reason. I want to measure its accuracy. The dimension should be 15 by 50 millimeters. The length is correct. And also this 15 millimeters. Okay. And also conclusions, and first I will talk about pros and cons, and later I will try to compare it with some desktop engraver. The pros. I really like the hardware, it is really good quality. For example, this rotary unit, it is one of the best I tested so far. I really like its portability. We are able, if you use uh, this shield, we can engrave, for example, something on the doors. We don't have to take it down and put it on below it or something like that. But of course in that case we have to fit in that 100 by 100 mm working area. And this shield is actually the length of the focus you have to align to the surface and do that engraving. It really gives a sharp engraving and don't forget I can see very often that uh, users buy those 40, 60 watt diode lasers and they do mostly engravings. But for the engraving weaker laser is actually better because uh, those strong laser combine several diodes into one beam 
but they don't want to, to focus in one spot. They try to prolong the focus and with this we have bigger spot. And some manufacturers recognize this and sometimes we have the switch to disable part of the power. So definitely for the engraving this gives us very sharp and nice picture. And it is also very fast, especially if you do some black and white engraving and you have a lot of empty space. And in that case there the traveling speed will be very fast and it will be faster than those regular test of engravers. And now the cons. First of all, the working area is only 100 by 100 millimeters. Of course, with this extension slider, it can be 100 by 300 millimeters. If this is enough for you, then okay, compared to the desktop engravers. Now, this shield is sometimes in the way, especially when I'm using it with a slider, because it has the exact length of the focus. And uh, it, when it moves, it is very close and very often it touches the material which is below it. Now, I already mentioned that it is great for the engraving, but it is not so good for the cutting. Not because of the 12 watt power, it could be enough. But first of all, we cannot connect air assist here because of this structure. And also because of this galva system, uh, the laser always starts for one point. And if we have some cuttings on the edges, then those edges will be under some angle. And again, because of this structure, it is not so easy to handle the smoke. You have to use it in good ventilated room. Maybe solution could be to have some pipe or some kind of vacuum cleaner or similar, but it is not so simple like having some kind of enclosure for the desktop engraver. Well, actually, only later I noticed that they offer the enclosure exactly for this uh, laser nano series. Comparison to the desktop engraver, well, I think I already answered this. Uh, so very shortly, the best advantages of this, it is portable. You can take it off and engraving furniture or door or something like that. And the other is that it is faster if you have a lot of uh, white empty space on that graphics. If you have some additional experience, you know, fill us in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.